crazy bastards welcome back to the Kimbo compound on the Andre Corbiel show and it's all about the Hart family this week Brett the hitman Hart the guy that pretty much everyone has heard of the uh, excellence of execution he yeah definitely the badass Brett the hitman Hart broke barriers for today's wrestling now, this is definitely true technically sound wrestler and he just accomplished so much in his career. Uh, he was cut a little short with injury at the end and uh, he's overcome a lot of things and just a huge family that is strictly wrestling. Not entertainers, just pro wrestlers, man. And I like the family. Now that uh, documentary that Andre provided, the Matt Hart story, that is pretty cool. Smith Hart's son, Smith Hart as well, his story along the lines with that. Um, check that out definitely heart touching that kid went through a lot and he's doing stuff and Andre has the privilege of hanging out with these guys up there and that is very cool and he's interviewed everyone even Bret Hart that is awesome so Andre good for you man keep doing what you're doing and um, like I said breaking barriers moving through um, coming on a tag team too with uh, Jim the Anvil Neidhart and that was um I must have been like six, seven years old when that all was going down. And uh, the Rockers was another great tag team. But out of these two tag teams, you see what happens here. You had two emerge to become two of the biggest superstars in WWF history. And um, they weren't the seven foot, 300 pound monster like a lot of people were in the late 80s, mid 80s, you know, all the way up even into the mid 90s. Even today, you still got some giant dudes, you know, but the point was, the landscape was a lot of these big giant guys, and for somebody like a Bret Hart, out of a tag team, Shawn Michaels out of a tag team, the Rockers, they slide into this and become main eventers, and they are fighting for the championship back back and forth, and they, they do hold the title. They have championship runs from the IC all the way up to the world title, and that is badass um, because today's wrestling, there's a lot of stuff that goes back to these two guys. So if you see it now, it probably stemmed back to Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels. So um, the two were awesome back then. Shawn Michaels wasn't such a nice guy. A lot of people can admit that, even Shawn himself. Bret Hart has always been pretty much the same kind of guy. Um, he's not that glam glitz guy. He just technically sound, goes out there and busts his ass and puts on a great match and he doesn't hurt anyone and that's another thing that a lot of people were talking about because Bret Hart made his comments about Seth Rollins injuring people and uh, hey, proof's in the pudding. If he hasn't injured anyone over that length of a career, Seth Rollins, you know, he had a few mishaps with partners but it takes two to go in a match and if that partner's willing to take a move, they're comfortable so, I, you know, it's a two-set street here. Um, but anyway, Brett made his comments. It is what it is. And um, he is a great wrestler. And the whole entire family, the Hart family all together, just die-hard wrestling is in their blood. Uh, not the entertainment aspect of it. It's just put on great matches, do great submissions, do great... I mean, look at Tyson Kidd, too. That goddamn kid is amazing went down with injury but <laughs> he is just phenomenal so um, I really dig the whole entire Hart family like I said Andre gets the privilege of hanging out with these guys and uh, really soaking up their atmosphere of how they really believe in this wrestling thing and it's not all that glad, glitz and glam and that's really cool and I like it I dig it and I appreciate it the wrestling is first not entertainment and you can uh, with the matches that Bret Hart went through a few most memorable matches ever. The Iron Man match in the blue cage back in the day for some of you old school fans with Shawn Michaels, 60 minutes of awesomeness. The Stone Cold match where Stone Cold passes out in his own pool of blood, making him a huge baby face. Just great stuff. And uh, Bret Hart has his stamp on these matches forever. Can't take that away. Then that Montreal screw job. 
This was due to a contract that he had signed with WWF at the time, 20 year contract they couldn't fulfill because of money issues. Now that's not Brett's fault and he wanted to do the right thing, he just didn't want to lose the belt. And you know, you can go back and forth on this. Uh, everyone already has, so I'm not going to. The point was Vince McMahon went to Brett and told him that he should try to go to WCW and get the money that they were going to give him, but they couldn't. And so that, he, he was asking a favor out of Brett, so he should have allowed Brett to maintain his title until he left. But Vince was worried and believed, believed that he was gonna take the belt to WCW. So I understand where Vince was coming from too, so it is what it is. I wasn't there, I don't know either man, man. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, and then um, Seth Rollins, um, that whole thing that a lot of people are a little pissed off about. Brett was right, Seth is right, it, it is what it is. And then out of this, it leads us into the next section. Um, yes, Bret Hart, awesome. The excellence of ex execution, you guys. You can't go wrong with a Bret Hart match, simple as that. Uh, but then moving on to the rumors of the week and the news, because this is news of Seth Rollins Wrestling School. Um, just had a student die. Uh, that is tragic. And I can't stand the way it's titled because now everyone's looking like, was Seth Rollins there doing something? And it'll, the, you know, he, what, he had trainers there training somebody, Seth Rollins was not there, but the point is, the titles everyone's going to read, it just puts a little more salt into that, and holy shit, nobody's gonna go back. Anyway, uh, they're still working on why the student died, uh, not sure yet. So guys, there's a little news, sad news too. Uh, so protect yourself if you're out there wrestling and learning the deal. Uh, moving on to AJ Styles which awesome, he is now WWE World Champion, is looking to have a lengthy run with the title. Now this is great news, because the Dean Ambrose experiment, if you want to call it, didn't really pan out. Um, yeah, I wish it did, but AJ Styles is in the right place at the right time, and let's run with it because it's badass. And it looks like John Cena after No Mercy is going to be leaving to do the American Grid thing. So, perfect. Why not? Let AJ Styles have a nice run and wrestling is great and SmackDown's uh, ratings almost identical to Raw. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, they didn't have to compete with the NFL, but I don't care. SmackDown's ratings were almost equal to Raw. So, this is really cool. Then Goldberg is teasing again. Uh, Clash of Champions appearance possibly coming back. Um, who knows uh, with uh, Goldberg, I tell you. Come back, because he did just blow his nose in a Brock Lesnar shirt, but we'll see. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll come back. Or was it Clash of Champions? That's where, not No Mercy. Anyway, that's where he's supposed to come back. And um, that's rumor. Then, um, Looks like there's nothing gonna come out of the Daniel Bryan Miz situation, um, but you can look into this storyline wise. Daniel Bryan was the IC title holder and when he had all that issues and he had to vacate the title and now Miz is, is holding the IC title. Now Daniel Bryan wanted Miz on the roster because of that title. So this could all come around to be Maybe some something that Daniel Bryan recruits like a new wrestler, or if he does get in the ring again, you know, possibly. I highly doubt it, but maybe they're making us believe that. That's that would be awesome. That's doing a really good job on a creative standpoint. So, what do you guys think? Would you like to see Daniel Bryan come back? Possibly, say he was cleared and there's no way he's going to get injured. Would you like to see Daniel Bryan in the ring again, or is it time to just play the role that he's doing? I think he's doing great with what he's got going on right now, and to come back again after this, you know, few steps, seems like, uh, I don't know, you, you just, you're, you get scared for the guy. So I say, just stay out of the ring, do your thing outside, yeah, I know you might, he wants to come back and do it. It's his love, it's his passion, but damn, health and, you know, sustaining life. So you gotta put that number one, so, simple. Then, the last rumor of the week, Billy Corgan was at Evolve. Well, that's news, but 
why was he, Billy Corgan and some TNA officials at an Evolve show over the weekend? The rumor was maybe they're scouting, maybe they're just um, in works with Evolve over something. So guys, that's it for the week. If you heard any rumors, drop them down below. We love to hear them. It's extreme as possible or even legit news drop it down below hit the thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to this channel the Vince Russo brand hell yes we're dropping it every week here in the Andre Corbio show and we'll catch you next week